Great. Well, we'll point people to that. Listen, we've got some people starting to ask some questions. Do you guys mind taking yeah. questions? Maybe we'll find one that Jock hasn't heard yet. Oh, that must Remember, be one. he's been at it for 70 years. So I got yeah, I, I know. It's a, we challenge ourselves all the time. I mean, we had a two-hour meeting last night trying to come up with a question that we don't think Jock's heard. So it's very difficult. I'm sure you've heard a lot. But here's one that maybe you've been asked, but I, I've never heard you ask. And uh, this comes from a gentleman named Matt. He says, I've had a question for Jock for a while. Can you ask him if he has an opinion on teaching kids to be ambidextrous from a young age, meaning encouraging them to be right and left-handed? You want him to be both? So he's asking if you would want to do that. Right. right? Do you right. think there's some advantage to okay, I'd rather kids, give kids an overview of the earth they live in, how to relate with other people, I wouldn't work on, on one aspect of behavior. But you have an interesting theory about why people are right-handed or left-handed. Yes, I do. <laughs> well, if that's you, interesting because I'm left-handed and I consider myself the oddball. I'm going to try to try to answer that. If you were born with two heads and one head woke what? up there in the morning. <laughs> What's that? And one I'm head sorry, woke I can't up. And one head woke up earlier in the morning and started to move the right arm. And then that head may become the dominant head that moves the right arm. If the other head sleeps later, it will lose control of the body. So you have two brains in the same nervous system. You have a nervous system today, and people bring up kids to be jealous. They say, you didn't do your homework. Billy can go to movie, but you can't. That makes jealousy and envy in the family. Never use one kid against the other kid. Never say to one girl, why can't you be like your sister? She puts everything in place, and I have to pick up after you. Once you do that, you start separating your kids, and they have negative feelings about each other. Oh, that's not what I was thinking about, with being right-handed or left-handed. That has to do with breastfeeding. Yes, that's what I was thinking If you feed a child on the left breast and you don't give the right hand a chance to move, the hand that's free to move becomes the hand that becomes dominant. Oh, that's interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah, that is very interesting. These children have the right breast more so, and the hand is compressed and doesn't get a chance to move around. Children reach and touch all kinds of things. If you tied the hand down and they began to use the other hand more, they wouldn't use their hand at all. Wow. So, so you're saying that le- being left or right-handed is not natural. It's actually oh. environmentally driven. Well, as a neurologist trying to look at the brain and understand how a person thinks and works, they can't find out by looking at the brain. Nor can you see the voice of Caruso on a record. You can see undulations and marks, which were made when he sang. To study human beings, you study the environment they come from. Not, it's not within the person's head. All you can find out in the person's head is different areas, the frontal lobes, the occipital lobe, which is vision, the temporal lobe, which is sound. But you can't understand people by looking at the neuronal network, any more than you can give a transistor to an early electrician and say, what do you think it is? Even if he cut it open, he wouldn't know what it was. Right. So you can't cut a person open and find out what makes a human tick. You can find what different areas of the brain's function is. If a guy has a tumor in the occipital lobe, he may go blind. You know what I mean? Right in the visual hemispheres. So you can only find out the region of the brain. But if you want to study human beings, study the environment they come from. 